Today's Monday and today I had the last lecture in our course here at USC. This is kind of sad and a final exam is approaching, but this lecture was really special because it was about aging in bacteria. This is a widely neglected and understudied topic, and uh, the main reason why is because people always thought that bacteria just don't age, that the colony can go on forever uh, because the bacteria would uh, divide symmetrically, and uh, people didn't even think that uh, there was aging uh, in bacteria. However, um, um, some, some time in the 1990s that was changed, um, there were two well, at least several um, uh, crucial experiments that actually showed that no, bacteria do age and um, there is asymmetric division and I'm going to talk about um, uh, at least two really um, elegant and um, well powerful experiments that uh, allowed the researchers to actually state that yes, bacteria do have aging. But before we get to that, I would like to talk uh, to you about how bacteria actually behave in a colony. So let's talk about E. coli. Uh, if you put them um, in a, you know, um, in a nutrient-rich uh, medium, they have a lot of food, they start growing quite rapidly, and if you map the number of cells um, against time, uh, you would have a graph that looks uh, pretty much like this. So you would start with some, say, like a million cells, right? And it would go like this. So there would be um, a time when they would grow exponentially. There's this rapid growth, but um, it stops. And at some point there is a plateau uh, where the bacteria do not divide. And um, the doubling time that's about 20 minutes, so basically 20 minutes, that's a generation for bacteria, and they go from millions to billions. Uh, and um, But then E. coli stop dividing, and people don't really know why exactly they do that. Um, there, there were uh, some theories saying that, oh, there's just so many nutrients in, in a test tube, right? But in fact, there is enough nutrients for them to uh, have at least another generation. So even when there are, there is still food, bacteria somehow sense that they are already good shape, that the colony has good numbers. Maybe there's this quorum sensing um, that is going on and a quorum sensing is when cells know how many cells are around them. Basically they kind of know how many neighbors they have and E. coli are really really good at calculus. They are exceptional sensing systems. So um, it, it um, turns out that the colony is kind of like um, like it has a consciousness. Basically it can sense that oh okay so we have already good numbers there is not unlimited amount of food so the there is some food however um, that really kind graduate student didn't come and feed us so um, we're gonna just stick with the numbers that we have so they stop dividing and um, there is no consensus in the field why exactly they do that but they do that they just do not divide then what happens? They stay uh, in this state for three days and after that there is exponential death. They just start dying. Like all of a sudden 99% of the cells are dead. But there's this 1% that is still hanging in there. Those cells are especially interesting. They do not um, differ um, genetically at first from uh, the cells that died. However, in 10 days, as it turns out, they start, uh, there, there are genetic differences. And those cells, this 1%, if you do not add nutrients to the medium, if you just leave the system as it is and just monitor, uh, just keep looking at it and see uh, how for how long it's going to survive, actually it can survive for at least two, 
five years. And this was uh, Dr. Steven Finkel, that's the professor who gave us a lecture today. He showed his data and the graph, he actually followed the same um, remaining 1% in the colony and uh, he would have um, gone uh, longer, but then he um, um, had to leave that lab where he was working at the time uh, to go here uh, to take the faculty position at USC. So he stopped that experiment. Um, uh, definitely the uh, survival went down, but at a very, very slow rate. So this 1%, it's really different. Um, and it, um, he called it the GASP which stands for uh, growth advantage in stationary phase. And it turns out those cells um, that are, uh, first of all, um, physiologically different uh, from the majority that dies in that rapid death phase, um, but then they become genetically different. There is um, a kind of a selection going on here. Uh, they uh, gain mutations that allow them to utilize the nutrients that are in this test, test tube, the remaining nutrients, to be used more efficiently than their predecessors, well, which are all dead now, and when they die, they actually lose what um, uh, they disintegrate, and everything that's inside it comes into the test tube and serves as food for the remaining 1%. So those mutations that are uh, happening in that 1% population, they give them metabolic advantages. Um, for example, uh, they can utilize, say, uh, serin uh, better than their predecessors, so it makes them, at this point of time, more adapted to the environment, and this is how they remain alive. Basically, they switch their metabolism to maintenance and repair, and this is how this 1% um, can survive for a very, 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 very long time.